Amen. Amen. I, I have been in, as I told you, I have been really enjoying the beautiful music, the feast of praise that we've been having here in Nairobi. And I, I enjoyed trying to read the language and um, fascinated by the words um, in your language and just love it. I hope, I'm really hoping that the Lord, you know, you know, on the day of Pentecost, the Lord worked a miracle. Yes. And allowed these uneducated disciples to speak in other tongues. And I'm hoping that one of those miracles can be happen to my wife and myself. So we can leave with a good grasp of your language. That would be interesting if I go back to the Cayman Islands speaking. What's the name of the language here, by you? Swahili. If I go back to the Cayman Islands speaking some Swahili, that would be good stuff. <laughs> that would be good stuff. Really enjoy it. Okay, good morning, everybody. And for those of you watching by the internet, wherever you are, I know it may be night, some of you. Um, in the western part of the world, folks up in Canada, folks up in, U in UK, and folks in the Caribbean, and all over the world who are watching, we're delighted to have you um, back home in the Cayman Islands, and down in Jamaica, land we love, we want to welcome everybody who's watching online, uh, Nairobi Central Camp Meeting 2023. Hope you had a good rest last night, did you? Amen? Yes, and the Lord has brought us back again here this morning. Uh, to continue to do some work. Um, so, so our presentation today will be in two parts. Um, we'll take the first part this morning. And then this evening when you come back, we will be working on the second part of our presentation entitled Procrastination. You hear me that big one? And then tomorrow morning, you don't want to miss tomorrow morning, call me Peter. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow evening, call me Paul. You don't want to miss any of those presentations. But for the next few minutes that we have, as the clock on the wall um, uh, tells me, we're going to, I'm going to ask for your help as we unpack, unpack a, a challenge, huge problem that I have noticed in the Bible concerning the second coming of Christ. So bow your heads with me as we unpack this subject, the coming. Father, I, I know I know, I'm aware, I am conscious of this one fact that I dare not open your words without asking for help. So again, Lord, please, for your sake and for the sake of the waiting hearts here today, Send the Holy Spirit upon us as we open your words again, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. The coming. There is a huge problem with the coming of Jesus that I don't think many in my church is aware of. Huge problem. Some of our brethren are excited about the coming of Christ, which we ought to. But I think for a large portion of us, we have overlooked this major problem that is attached to the coming of Christ. And for the purpose of our camp meeting this morning, I'd like to 
identify it and bring it to the forefront of your mind so that we can deal with it so that it doesn't prevent us from being ready when the Lord comes. Is that all right? Problems, big problems. Here's it. Here's it. Luke 12, verse 40, Jesus spit out this <laughs> amazing statement, problematic statement, troubling statement. He says, therefore, come on, help me read. One, two, three. Therefore, you also be ready. Mm -hmm. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. That, my dear friend, is a problem. What's the problem? Watch me, watch me. If you read the book of Matthew, chapter 24, there is a litany of signs that Jesus had, has given us. Signs after signs after signs after signs after signs. And, the, and he said, these signs are to get you ready and to prepare you for the second coming. Is the church with me? But in, here, here's my problem. In spite of all these signs, Jesus says, I'm still going to come at a time when you do not expect. Which, which tells me, so hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, Jesus. Which tells me that even though I gave you the signs, mm -hmm, for most of you, if not all of you, the signs do, do not seem that they will be helpful to you because I'm still going to come at a time when you do not expect me to come. And the question then is, if we get the signs of your coming, if we keep track of them, what in the world could have caused us not to be ready when you come? What could cause you to come when we are not expecting you to come? Because if we're tracking the signs, then we should know when you're coming. But what should cause this? What, what, what could possibly cause it? What could cause us not to be Ready? What would cause a Seventh-day Adventist members in the church not to be ready when we have the three angels message, when we have the prophecies, when we have the sign, when we are raised up for one purpose, and that is to get the world ready? What could cause us not to be ready? Ah, I'm happy you asked the question. The answer? Sleep. Sleep. Sleep, 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 <laughs> sleep. Hey, please notice, not disobedience, sleep. Not returning your tithe and offering, no, 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 sleep. Not breaking the Sabbath, sleep. Not being ungodly, no. Sleep, 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 sleep is going to be our biggest problem, sleep. So let's unpack that a little. So Jesus gave us five lessons to help us to be prepared for his coming, five lessons. I will deal with four of them today, this morning, and I reserve one of them for this evening. So let's jump into these lessons, antidote for sleep. Lesson number one, five lessons, five lessons. Lesson number one, the summer is coming. Lesson number two, the thief is coming. Lesson number three, the bridegroom is coming. Lesson number four, the master of the house is coming. Number five, the day of the Lord is coming. Five consecutive lessons Jesus spit out to get us ready. So let's unpack number one. 
the summer is coming. The summer is coming. So here's what Jesus says about that. I'm in Matthew 24, 32. He says, now learn, come on, let's read like kindergarten children. One, two, three. Now learn this parable from the, from where? From the fig tree. Now, you guys have fig tree here? In Nairobi, is there a fig tree? There is? Oh, you're not sure? Okay. I, I, was, I, was, preaching, <laughs> I was preaching this in the Cayman Islands. Um, was it earlier this year uh, or last year? Um, and, I, and I noted that there are no fig trees in the Cayman Islands. Um, so, by the time I went home, there was a fig tree plant at my door. Some, somebody, somebody had a fig tree in a pot, and they decided to bring it to the preacher. <laughs> Amen. I love preaching, so that the next time I preach about fig tree, I have something tangible. And, and by the way, my wife is, is very, she's a lover of flowers and stuff, so she... So she was able to take care of that fig tree. And we got some figs off of it. The first time I was eating figs. And um, so I, I knew what Jesus meant by fig tree. But if you don't have fig tree, we can... Sub in, Luke, in Luke's version, you will soon see Jesus says, not just fig tree, he says all the trees. But he says, learn a parable from the fig tree. Let the fig tree teach you, he says, about the second coming. What's the parable? Well, when its branches, uh, when its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, Jesus says, you know that the summer is near. Now, now, I don't know if you guys have different seasons here, but when the trees start to put out branches, what season is that? Anybody know? What season, come on, talk back to me. What season do, the, do the, the trees put out new branches? Well, the spring. That's correct. Spring, 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 spring. Uh, and, and I have to be very careful here. Let me just, let me just, let me just um, disclose something. The first time I came to Nairobi, Pastor, I was shocked. I'm, I'm deviating a little from my sermon here. I, I was shocked. It was cold. It was cold. And where's Pastor Ambuchi? Pastor Ambuchi didn't tell me that when it is summer in my country, it is winter here. <laughs> so, I, so in the Cayman Islands and in Jamaica, August is the mid of summer. It is hot. That's the hottest month. And, and back in the West, we do not associate cold with Africa because on television screen, all we see is heat. Amen? Are you with me? So I think I'm coming to a hot country. I didn't even dress for it, didn't even pack for it. When I reach here, I understand that you guys are in winter. And I said, oh my goodness. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't aware that when you're having winter, I am having summer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, 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 so I'm going to be, I'm going to be careful with the seasons here. But what Jesus says is this, when, when the leaves, when the trees start to put out little young leaves, look at what the text says. All of you know that the summer is near. Put another way, all of you know that we're now in spring, and what comes after spring? Summer. Come on, start with the preacher. What comes after spring? Summer. So when the leaves starts to come out, you all, all of you, watch this, all of you know that you are in spring, and then the next season is summer. So when the leaves are coming out, you that tells you that summer is on its way. Summer is just around the corner. Summer is next door. Is the church with me? 
No, no, for me, for me on the text, the last piece is the, was the most important. It says, you know. Which means, which means, it is a common knowledge. Hey, you don't have to go university to know that if the leaves are coming out on the tree, it is spring, and then after spring comes summer. It's common knowledge, you know. Why is that important, preacher? Answer, here's it, here's it. So also, when you see all these things, now what things? The list of signs that Christ has given. When you see these things, know that it is near. How near? Even at the door. So what's the point? Oh, here's the point. If you didn't get the point. In the very same way that it is common knowledge that when the leaves are budding on the tree, summer is near, what Christ he says, when you see the signs that I tell you about, it ought to be common knowledge that my coming is also near. Point one. Point two. Point two. Point two. Don't miss this. There's something about spring and summer, and that is once spring comes, summer comes behind it, and you can't stop it. Meaning, meaning it is in a motion. Watch me, watch the preacher. This, this, the, the four seasons are in a motion, and that motion cannot be slowed down. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be diverted. Once spring comes, you know that summer is behind it. So Jesus says, once you see the signs fulfilling, we are in a motion. It cannot be slowed down. It cannot be stopped. You can rest assured that after, after these signs, the second coming of Christ is on its way. Is the church with me? And so what Christ says, it ought to be common knowledge. So the question for the Adventist church in Nairobi, is it common knowledge in Nairobi? When you see the signs being fulfilled, do the members of Ken do the people in Kenya, do all, how many people you have here in Kenya? What's the population? Si what? Silence. What's the population in Kenya? 50 million? About 50 million. 50 million? Whoa. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Is it common knowledge among the 50 million? Is the signs of the time common knowledge to them that Jesus is near? Or it's, o hey, hey, hey. Or it's only common knowledge in the church? Let, let me say that. Let me repeat that for you. Is it common? Does the average man on the road of Nairobi understand that when they say crime and violence, when they see all these, all these natural disasters taking place, when they see the signs full, is it common knowledge in Kenya? Uh, and if it, is not, if it is not common knowledge in Kenya, how is it common knowledge in the church but not on the road? Why is it not common knowledge? Which means that, hey, 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 the church cannot rest until it becomes common knowledge out there. Is the church with me? Because that's the reason why God raised us up. It got to be common knowledge. Number one. Here's Luke. Luke version on it says, he told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and what else? All the trees, and I said, praise the Lord, because if you don't have fig trees, still happen to the trees that you have back home. We have mango trees. We love mangoes. So I'm happy that Luke put in all the trees, because there's no excuse to say, well, I don't have fig tree. Well, it's all the trees. Amen? When you see the sprout leaves, you can see four yourselves and know that the summer is near even so when you see these things happening know that the kingdom of god is near and i'm about to tell you all the prophecies that are listed here have already been fulfilled in nairobi and so one of my concerns is how close christ is to the second coming um, we are to the second coming of christ and the majority on the people on the street are not aware of it and if that is so, then the church has some work to do. Number two. Number two. Second lesson. 
The thief is coming. Mm -hmm. The thief is coming. Here is Jesus. Here is Jesus. In Matthew 24, again. Let me read. Jesus says what? Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. It's a, it's a warning that keeps coming over and over and over again. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. Verse, 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 verse 43. Here is Jesus. He says, but, help me read, but what? But know this. I, 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 online, I have online, um, underlined that for you. Know this. When, when Jesus tells you to know something, don't overlook it. Know this. Those of you who are preparing for the second coming of Christ. Know what Jesus answer? Well, know that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, mm -hmm, he would have watched and not allow his house to be broken. True? True? True. So, oh, okay. Hey, everybody, all eyes on me, 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 all eyes on me. Even the children, all eyes on me. Let, let's look at the text. Let's look at, let, let, let the text talk to you. Let the text talk to you. Jesus says, Jesus says, know this, know this, know what? If the, if the master of the house, if you know that a thief is coming to break your house. By the way, do those things happen here in Kenya? Okay. So, so it's common knowledge. See, you know what Jesus does? He uses things that we are familiar with. Have you with me? Are you with me? Good. So here's Jesus. If you know what hour the thief is coming to break your house, if you know that, what would you do? Come talk to me. Oh, you still don't get it. You still don't get it. If you are in church right now, and you know that the thief is coming to break your house in the next 15 minutes, what would you do? You would leave church. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You would leave church. Am, am I right? And you'll go home. To watch out for that thief. Am I right? If you are at work. Yes. And you know. What hour the thief is coming. You leave work. Am I right? And you go home. To watch for that thief. If you are at a football match. If you are enjoying yourself. And you know. What time the thief is coming. No matter what you are doing. Watch the preacher. You would make the sacrifice. Does that make sense? You would make the sacrifice to run home, amen, and to prepare for the thief. In other words, in other words, watch a preacher, 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 watch a preacher. The problem, the problem is if you don't know what time the thief is coming, then it is likely that we are not going to put out that extra effort to go watch the house. That's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. If we know what time Jesus is coming, we would make the effort to watch. But because we don't know what time Jesus is coming, yeah, we will watch when we have time to watch. Watching, we're not, watch the preacher, we're not motivated to watch. Because we don't know what time the thief is coming. In other words, we may go there and the thief don't come for the whole night. And then we call, oh man, I waste the church service. I could have been at church. 
I could have been at work. We, because we don't know what time the thief is coming, it, it causes us not to have the level of motivation and zeal that we needed to put in. And so this is where the problem lies. So, so watch me. So watching becomes difficult. Watching becomes boring. And it is that time when we are likely to fall asleep. And that's what Jesus is warning about. If we know what time the thief is coming... We would make the effort to watch. We would motivated to watch. But because we don't know. Ah, verse 44. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you, you don't know. And that's where the problem is. Hey, church of God, listen to me. That's where the problem is with the second coming of God. Is that we don't know what, he, what time is coming. And therefore, watching for him to come is a long, laborious, boring task. And it is that, it is that unknown factor that wearies us. In the watching process, that unknown factor, that's the problem. That is the problem in the Adventist church. Oh, oh, oh. That's the problem with the ten virgins. You remember them? We're going to talk about them tonight. That's the problem. Hey, hey, stay with the preacher. It's not that they weren't watching, you know. Did you get that? No, 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 no. It's not that they weren't watching. Hey, those of us who lose our souls when the Lord comes, it's not that they weren't watching. No, 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 they were watching. But what happened? They fell asleep. Why? They didn't know the time when the bridegroom comes. That's where the danger lurks. Hey, members of God's church, that's where the danger... Do you know how many people started to watch, but Peter out, by the way? Because there is no set time for the coming. That's where the danger lurks. And that's why Jesus kept saying the same thing over and over and over again. He says, therefore be ready for you don't know the hour that the, that the Son of Man is coming. It's coming at a time when you don't expect it. Number three. The master of the house is coming third parable Jesus give about the coming there's so much stuff about this coming of Christ here's here's it here's it I want to take note of this one this one is in Mark 13 verse 32 to 37 let's read together but of that day and that hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Hey, this is a whole sermon on this verse. So, so let's unpack this verse. Number one, the first thing we know about this verse is that the day of Christ's coming is set. Yes? And the hour is set. That point one, that's what we know. The second thing we know is that even though it is set, nobody knows that day, nobody knows that hour. Number three, out of that, this is a shaka. Not even the angels in heaven. No, if they don't know it, I'm okay with that. Is that okay with you? Huh? Yes. Where I have a little problem is the next couple of ver uh, words. <laughs> this is where I have a little problem. It says, not only the angels who don't know, but somebody else don't know. Who is that? The son. Now, who is the son? Huh? Uh, talk back to me, man. Lunch time soon comes. Talk back to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and by the way, by the way, by the way, this is Jesus talking, you know. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, the angels don't know that day, neither the son. And we now understand that the Son is, is Jesus. So what Jesus is saying, I don't even know the day myself. What? what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. He's coming back. 
But he says, I don't even know the day I am coming back. Why? Because I don't set the day. Ah, so who knows? The Father. Notice what it says. Only, only the Father. Hang on, hang on. Here's a piece of theology. Here's a piece of theology. Hey, I'm going to deviate from my sermon. Here's a piece of theology. So, 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 so some people tell us that there's no difference between the Father and the Son. Oh, but the text tells me that the Father, <laughs> the text tells me that the Father has some knowledge that the Son doesn't have. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Jesus. That the Father has some knowledge. That, in other words, Jesus says, the Father is the one who sets the date. And when he tells me go, I go. Is the church with me? So, so, so on the subject, on the second coming of Christ, on the second coming of Christ, what the text says, uh, Jesus says, I don't even know the day. This is top secret that only the Father keeps it to his chest. And so Jesus wants us to understand that, um, that nor, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Well, the next thing we, the next point we want to, to, to bring to your attention is verse 33. Verse 33 says, I mean verse 33, it says, take heed. If you look in your Bible, it says, take heed, watch, and pray. Ha! For you do not know when the time is, take heed what? Watch, watch, and pray. Those are two different um, action words. Take heed, be careful. Amen. Be careful. Watch. Which means that if you're sleeping, you can't watch. So the caution that Jesus gave, be careful. As you wait for the second coming of Christ... Make sure that you are not just praying, but that you are, watch, you are watching, meaning that you are awake, you are conscious, you are aware. For you, here's the, here's the theme coming again. For you do not know when that time is. Over and over and over and over and over. The same thing Jesus has been saying. Keep watching, keep praying, keep alert, keep fast. Keep anchored. Have a relationship with Christ. Because if you don't know what time it's coming, you can find yourself falling asleep even in the church. Even in the church. And that's a challenge for us. So take heed, watch and pray for you don't know the day. And then, and then in verse 34, you'll soon see it on the screen as soon as we get it back on the screen for you. It says, it's like a man... Verse 34, is like a man going into a far country. And when he goes in, the, if, you, if you take your Bibles out, come on, take your Bibles out. Don't you, go ahead, take your Bibles out. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, um, I know, I know you, re, you get relying on the screen. The screen will fail you, but that Bible won't fail you. Yeah. Uh, verse 34, thank you guys, you're back up on the screen. It says, it's like a man... Going to a far country. Look at the text. Look at the text. Who left his house. Gave authority to his. To his. Servants. And to each his work. So the servants has, had their work. And commanded the. Doorkeeper. To watch. Now stay with me. Let's unpack this. So there's a difference between the. Servants and the. Doorkeeper. Come on, stay with me. There's a difference between the servants and the doorkeeper. Yeah. The servants were to do their work while the doorkeeper was supposed to watch. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm going to help you with this now. So the man going into a far country, let's call him Jesus. He's the owner of the house. And he left his house, meaning the church, yeah, and gave authority to the servants of the church to do their work. Now, I'm, su I'm suggesting to you that the servants of the church represents the members of the church. And then, who do you think the doorkeeper represents? Look, 
Look at the text. Look at the text. The coming of Christ is like, <laughs> I love this stuff. The coming of Christ is like a man going to a far country, left his house, right? To the servants to do their work and to the doorkeeper to watch. Uh -huh. I'm suggesting to you that the man going in a far country is Jesus himself. He has to leave and go back home. But he left his church and asked the servants, and I'm suggesting to you that the servants are the members, and they are supposed to do what again? Their work. Mm -hmm. And then he says, and I command the doorkeeper to watch. Now, if the members are the servants in the church, who are the doorkeepers? Okay, let me, 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 let me suggest to you. I, I, I'm suggesting to you that the doorkeepers are the pastors. Oh, let me put it where you get it. That the servants is the laity. And the doorkeeper is the clergy. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when the laity and the clergy begin to work together, then there is some safety in the house. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So watch me, watch me. So the, so the servants, watch me, watch the preacher. The servants had their work to do. Stay, stay with me, stay with me. Stay. Everybody can't be working and nobody watching. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because then the church will be doing its work and still not ready for the Lord to come. And by the way, and everybody can't be watching and nobody working. Amen? Then the church will lose its mission. So the Lord, Lord appropriately assigned the two of them together to work together for the preparation of his second coming. Yeah, and that's why, that's why the clergy have that responsibility to study the word of God and keep watching while the church member does the work. Hello, somebody. Watch therefore. For you do not know when the master of the house is, is coming. He can come in the evening. He can come at midnight. He can come the crowing of the rooster or in the morning. There are four watches of the night. And he can put in his appearance at any one of those. So here's where you're going to talk back to me. Of those four watches in the night. Evening, midnight, the crowing of the rooster or the morning. If somebody is likely to sleep, which of those times do you think they are more likely to sleep? Come on, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Let, let, let's, hey, 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 let's do it. By the way, I've not heard a rooster since that. You guys have roosters here? Yes? Okay. We have, we have hundreds of roosters. I mean, literally. Hundreds of roosters. Um, so, they wake us up in the morning. Let me ask you a okay, question. Look at the text. There are four watches in the night. Evening, midnight, crowing of the roosters. That's like about, I don't know, three, two, three o'clock in the morning. And then, in the morning. If a watcher is about to sleep, is likely to sleep, which of those times is he most likely to fall asleep? Huh? Somebody says midnight. Anybody else? Crowing of the rooster? Crowing of the rooster. Well, well here's the text. Here's the text. The text is, if, that, if we are likely to sleep at midnight, then what Jesus is trying to tell you, it is at that time, it is at that exact time when we are most likely to sleep that when the sky will split open and the Son of God put in his appearance. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. Hang on, people. Here's the message. I don't miss the message. God will not come at the time when we are expecting him to come. Does that, is that clear? Let, let me say that over here. God will not come at the time when we expect him to come. Over and over and over and over, it is repeated. He will come at the time when we least expecting. Put it in context for you. 
Let me put it in context for you. If all hell is breaking loose in Nairobi, if we have problems here and problems here and all kind of crime and violence and starvation and disease and all the other stuff and going on in top to, and people say, oh, well, this is the time. God. God is not coming during that time. Does that make sense to you? But let, let, me, let me put it again. He is coming at a time when the people in Nairobi is quite comfortable, well fed, have good jobs, low taxes. <laughs> Amen. It's coming at a time when there is no crime and no violence. In other words, peace and safety. If you think the preacher is joking, I can give you evidence for it. I can give you evidence for it. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say in the days of Sodom? As it was in the days of Sodom, they were eating and drinking and look at the text. They were eating, they were drinking, they were planting, they were doing all kinds of stuff. The economy was good, life was prosperous, nobody wanted God to come right now, and nobody expected God to come right now. Why? Because when life is sweet, nobody prays. When life is happy, nobody comes to church. Nobody, nobody think about God. He's coming at a time when the society is prosperous. You get it? Don't miss it. As it was in the days of Noah, same thing. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, and life was good. Did you hear the preacher? Life was good. Saddam and Gomorrah, life was good. Again, he's coming at a time when life is good. That's the danger. Because it is at that time that we sleep. It's at that time that we are comfortable. It's at that time when the, sermon, when the pulpits don't preach about the second coming of Christ anymore. Lest coming suddenly, he find you, he find you what? Sleeping. Ha! Over and over that word came coming up and it blows my mind. It keep coming up. Find you sleeping, find you at ease, find you resting, find you dozing off because life is comfortable. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch, watch. I'll turn to the last of the lessons for today, for this morning. The day of the Lord is coming. This one. I'm fascinated by this one. Fascinated by this. This one I found in the book of Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul. So Paul, and I want all eyes on me. So, so if you understand, when you read the New Testament, when you read the letters written by Paul, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, I want you to understand the context of those letters. What happens is that the church that Paul pastored while he was in prison, most of those letters are prison letters. Is the church still with me? They had problems in the church. And so they would send messages to Paul, their pastor who was in prison, to ask him questions about the problems that they were having. Paul get their, got their questions and then wrote back to them the answer. It is the answer that we get in Bible. We don't get the question. We only get the answers. So it is the answers we get. So in 1 Thessalonians 4, there were a litany of things that they asked Paul about. Right? A number of things. And Paul responded to them. But one of the things they asked about is when the Lord comes back. <clears throat> Whether or not the dead will come before the living, will rise before the living. And Paul addressed that in 1 Thessalonians 4. That Paul says, Paul says, <clears throat> brethren, I want you, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who fall asleep in 
Christ. And he addressed that. And he addressed them. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. And, and he addressed the whole thing. That's in the last part of chapter 4. Watch the preacher. Watch the preacher. His answer to them continues over into chapter 5. That's why chapter 5 starts with the word, but. Have you seen that? But. Then he says, but concerning what? The times and the seasons, which means that they ask him about that also. Right? And he's, uh, he's giving them the answer. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Ha! In other words, I don't need to tell you anything about the time and the seasons. Mm. He shied away from that. And by the way, it's a good practice. Jesus shied away from it also. Because the disciples said, Lord, are you going to establish your kingdom now? And Jesus said, hey, hey, hey. When it comes to times and the seasons that the Father has set for himself, it's not for me to say to you. So Paul shied away from the time of the season. And he says, brethren, you don't have any, what, help, me, help me preach this stuff. You don't have any what? You don't have any what? Need. There is no need in the church to talk about the times and reasons and seasons. Why? Because the church already has the information. Does that make sense? Paul says, you already know the stuff. I'm going on. For, your, for you yourself, help me read this stuff. You yourself, you know how what? You perfectly know that the day of the Lord so come as what? Thief in the night when you least expect it. I don't need to tell you about it because you have the stuff. He says. Okay. So here's the dangerous part. The, <coughs> watch this, watch this. Although you know. Although you know. I'm just going to remind you. That <laughs> when you hear people in Nairobi. Saying peace and safety. When the economy is good, when the taxes are low, when there's food on the table, when everybody is doing well, Paul says, then sudden destruction comes upon them as what? Labor pains on a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Pause, 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 pause. My wife has two children. She gave birth to two children. And I learned a few things about labor pain. Yes. Um, there's a sermon coming up in this week about labor pain. Uh, I'm going to leave half of it down there because I learned a lot about labor pain. I learned a lot about pregnancy. A whole lot. I was pregnant with her. I mean, I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I was there from day one straight to the very birth. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was there. I was there. I'm part of the fun, so I need to be part of the travails. Labor pain is an interesting pain. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Labor, uh, labor pain is an interesting pain. How many of you have ever experienced labor pain? Raise your hand. Labor pain. Okay, okay, just a few. The men don't understand what we're talking about. <laughs> so let me help you with this. Labor pain is an interesting pain. Even though she is pregnant, one, and two, there's a sign of it because her tummy is projected. Are you with me? Even though she knows the, the uh, she has an idea of when the birth will actually take place. Yes? Watch your preacher. Even though she has an idea of the time when the baby is supposed to come, she does not know exactly when. Is that so? Yes. Yeah. Stay with me, stay with me. She will expect the baby to come maybe in another two weeks, they will tell you. But 9 o'clock on Monday morning, nobody can tell you that. Am I right? 
She does, hey, watch the preacher. She does not know when the first labor pain will start. No doctor can tell you exactly when that labor pain will start. They can give you an idea. Is the church with me? Yeah, a little, a little time when, when, you know, when it is likely to start. But, so watch me. So even though you are expecting it to come, you don't know exactly when. Same thing Paul says. Even though we are expecting God to come and we see all the signs around and we know he must, we do not know exactly when. And that's why he says the only thing you need to be prepared for, the time period in which he will come is when the world is at ease. And the mistake that a lot of people make is that when the world in turmoil, they said, yes, Jesus must be coming now, Pastor. Is the church with me? Yeah, when all hell breaking loose. Yes. See, G these are, Jesus is coming. No. No, that's not what Jesus says. Because mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. if he comes now, he comes when you are expecting him to come. And the Bible says he comes when you least expect him. Is the church with me? Is when all is well. So when I leave Nairobi, when I leave Nairobi, I want you to remember this preacher telling you, it is when all is well. It is when money in your pocket and your family members are happy and everything is doing well. That's when Jesus is going to put in his appearance. Is the church with me? So here's, let me wrap this up then. Here's what troubles the preacher. Here's what troubles the preacher. If you're a member of this church, this should trouble you. After saying that, Paul then went on to verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 4 says, But you, brethren, comma, you are not in darkness, comma, meaning, meaning, you have information. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. You have knowledge. You have information. You have the intel. You have everything you need to be saved. Then he says, so that this day should not overtake you as what? Thief. So if it catches others unprepared, it should not catch the member of the Seventh-day Adventist church. That's what Paul says. Why? Because you have the stuff. Paul says, because you study the prophecies, because you know the stuff, because you have a relationship with Christ. Help me read. You are all sons of, you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of the night. We are not in darkness. We are not in error. No, no. You have the truth. You have the oracles. You have everything. And then Paul says, therefore let us not, oh Jesus, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Because this is, this is where I wrap up this sermon. Look at the text. You are not in darkness. You have light. Meaning, you have the knowledge. You have the truth. You have the prophecy. You have everything. You have everything. You have everything to be saved. And then Paul said something that does not make sense. Therefore, let us not... Which means, which means, which means... Even though we have the truth... Hey! Even though we have the stuff, even though we have the knowledge, even though we have the prophecy, even though the Seventh-day Adventist church has the truth of God, it is still possible that we may fall asleep with the truth. That's the danger. Have, and I'm going to talk about that a little later this evening. Having the truth is not enough. To say, hey, having the truth is not enough to save us. That's the danger. That's the danger. That's the danger. Why? Let us not sleep as others do.
having the truth is not enough to save us because it is highly possible that we will go to sleep with the truth in fact in fact many of us may get so comfortable having the truth that we fall asleep this is this is what troubles the preacher this is what troubles the preacher you can't become a member of the Adventist church and think that is okay. I'm on my way to heaven. So Paul warns the church, don't get careless with the truth. Let me say that one more time. Don't get careless with the truth. Let us, because we are children of light, let us not sleep. Let us keep awake. Let us watch. There's a part two to this that I have to crack open tonight. Because I'll give you evidence when you come tonight of people sleeping with the truth. I'm tempted to give you a little peace. Let me just give you a little peace. I'm tempted. I'm going to fall to temptation. Is that all right? I'm going to succumb to temptation of people sleeping with the truth. One of the things that disturbed this preacher more than anything else, and I wrote it in my book, is God still coming. Up to now, it blows my mind that at the first coming of Christ, the first coming of Christ. Is the church with me? On the balcony? The first coming of Christ. The church back then had the prophecy. Amen? They had the oracles. They had the prophecy. Every single piece of Christ's coming was prophesied. Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. The place where he was to be born, Micah prophesied that. How he should be born, Isaiah prophesied that. Hey, hey, even how he should die, Isaiah prophesied. The whole thing, the church had it. Every Sabbath morning, they preach and they have the scripture and yet God came and the church did not know. And the church did not know. Ellen White says it's some uncircumcised Gentiles from far land rode into Jerusalem through wise men and asked, where is he that is born king? And the church don't know. And you ask the question, how is it every Sabbath morning you've gone to church? How is it every Sabbath morning you're preaching? How is it every Sabbath morning you're studying from the word of God? And God come and the church don't know that God is here. And they had the truth. They had the truth. The clergy didn't know. Read these half ages. Ellen White says, when Christ was born, those, those, those shepherds, have you, oh man, I'm getting, I'm in trouble here. My time is gone. But have you noticed, have you noticed, did you, did you notice, did you take note that when Christ was born, angels came down and sang? Amen. Do you know who they appear to? Ah, tell me, hey, there was a chief priest, there were elders, there were scribes, there, were, there was a huge entourage of clergy that ran the church at the time. Angels bypass the whole of them and go to some, some shepherds out on the outskirts. And it is to them angels sang to, not to the church leadership.
Why? It is to them. And Ellen White says, when they came into town and told church leadership, hey, that the Savior is born, <laughs> they ran them. These are ages, she says, the chief priest says, why would God bypass us who are ordained ministers to tell you, uneducated shepherd, that Christ was born? They had the truth and slept with it. They had the truth and fell asleep with it. That must not happen to the church of God again. Amen? Amen. That must not happen again. Study the word diligently. Look at it carefully. It says, when there is peace and safety. It says, when they are buying and selling. When the economy is good. It says when all the wars are over and people are enjoying themselves. It says when we are in prosperity. It says when life is good. When we least expect it. That's when the Lord is coming. My time is up. So the question is, are you ready for Jesus to come? Don't be deceived by the process. Don't be lost in the translation. Stay focused. Watch, Jesus says. Keep that relationship with him. Keep that connection with him. Hey, keep active with him. Watch and pray for he's coming at a time when you expect it not. So I'm going to invite this congregation to stand with me. Can I ask you to stand with me? So Israel blundered on the borders. The whole generation lost their soul and lost their life. Israel. We are again at the borders. And there's a high possibility that the same thing may happen to us again. And my burden as a preacher is to try to prevent that from happening by saying to my brethren, let us not be deceived on the borders again. Study the word diligently. Know God for yourself. Have a relationship with him. Have a testimony of his goodness. Let him carry you. Walk by the light that God has given to you. Because in a little while, he that shall come will come. And when he comes... And call the roll up yonder. It is my prayer. That there will be thousands and millions of people from Nairobi. Who will be in the number. But how many of you plan by God's grace to be there in the number? God bless you. God bless you. God, Keep your hands up. Lord. Search our hearts. Know our thoughts. And you will see that for every hand raised here this morning is a solemn determination to make it home to glory. We do not want to be lost on the borders. We sense the time has come to an end. God, we know that you're at the door to step out anytime. 
we recognize that the labor pains are about to start. And the hands raised here, lifted up towards heaven, is a hand, is an indication stating, we need your help, God, to keep us awake during these very difficult times. Because we want to be in the number. When this world is on fire, we want your bosom to be our shelter. And so, God, we're asking you, help us that we will be ready. Help us to stay watching and praying so that all will be well with our souls and we can go home to be with you. This is our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.